Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So I've reviewed the Hornet, and I've reviewed the Titan. What's next? Reviewing the Scout, obviously. The final piece to the puzzle when it comes to the Unity power system. And surprisingly, one of my favorite single-shot blasters ever of all time ever after I got to use it in person. Why is that? Let's find out. <laughs> Scout, just like the Titan and the Hornet, is a 2003 release out of Hasbro and included in the Unity Power System. And just like the other ones, you can buy this blaster separately, though I'm pretty sure you can't get it in this color scheme unless you got it with the Unity Power System. So this is technically an exclusive color scheme. With all that said, this blaster is actually very interesting despite the fact that I had no expectations for it out of the gate. When I first saw the Scout, I really didn't think I was going to like it at all. I figured if I ever do get a unity power system it's just gonna be the one blaster that gets pushed aside and i'm never gonna actually use it boy how wrong i was but we gotta start with the design and you bet your butts this blaster looks really really good just like the hornet and the titan it has the same color scheme being the sort of dark crimson red mixed with the silverish gray and these dark gray kind of black accents on the bottom and here's that awesome looking silverish color and it is put in a way that is somehow better than the titan and the hornet on the Hornet, for example, if I grab the Hornet over here, you can see that it was kind of on the back of the main body of the blaster. This one, it acts like this sort of electric kind of looking like circuit board style between the red and the silver on the priming handle and then it connects at the front that looks like an industrial like double barrel shotgun looking laser blast cannon thing which is the dart stored so it really does look like that but it also does function as a dart storage and that look is just amplified when you actually do put darts in it i really feel like these should be able to fire they don't but it would be really cool if they could Obviously being old Hasbro, everything aside from the red here has been painted on both sides. And the only thing they didn't paint on both sides was the Nerf logo. Once again, they painted it only on one side, but this time there isn't even a Nerf logo for them to paint. So I'll give them credit there. They didn't really have much of a choice. Again, one of the coolest looking little blasters ever. I don't know how old Hasbro managed to put out such good looking Nerf blasters, but come on. The Scout looks fantastic. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster just has a main grip and this top prime up here. The main grip is so nice. Minus one tiny little part. Right here on the back, this thing sticks out and it digs into the palm of your hand. Not too badly. If you hold it a little bit from the side, then you don't really notice it. But if you hold it like you're supposed to hold it, it is kind of noticeable. The other issue that I have is the trigger right here. It is really small and it is just, it's too small. I feel like the trigger should have been pushed a little bit farther forward, but that's getting into the really nitty gritty. The rest of the grip is very nice, smooth and filleted. It's got this big comfy finger trail for your middle finger. And unlike the Hornet, which is very cramped on your ring and pinky finger, there's lots of room here for both of them. In fact, your ring finger kind of gets a troil because of the way that this bottom piece is molded. So you get finger troils for all three of your fingers. And it feels really good. As for the top prime up here, it is the entire top of the blaster, so you can get quite a good handhold on it and then pull it back and push it forward to fire. It is a very nice ergonomic setup and I love it a lot. So how does this blaster work? If you've ever used a Night Finder, the Scout is basically the same thing, but with two very different details. Instead of having a flashlight, it doesn't have a flashlight. Instead, it has this rail on the top with a very interesting mechanism, which I will get into in just a moment. But you front load a dart, you pull this back, you can let go or push it forward, and then you pull the trigger to fire once. Or, because this was part of the Unity Power System, it's got an integrated feature that happens just by plugging it onto the Titan. So you plug it in on the side, if I can please line this up. Once it aligns, it clicks in, and then at this point, you can actually prime the blaster just by pushing it forwards and putting a dart in. And then there is a second trigger hidden on the top of the blaster, which can be remote activated by hitting this thumb button on the side. And that's all cool all by itself, but it actually doubles as a feature that you can use just with the Scout itself. The only thing the Titan's thumb button does is press in this tiny button on the top of the Scout. So theoretically, if you were to push this button right by itself, 
the blaster will still fire. So theoretically, if you could find a way to do it, you could have your thumb up on top of the blaster and be like, no, 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 my finger's off the trigger and discreetly shoot them. So again, the, the button's all the way up here. So if you have your thumb awkwardly placed on top of the blaster, it's gonna attract attention. I'm just saying it could be an option if you have big enough hands. Let's talk about the trigger on this blaster and with that said, the thumb button when you connect it to the Titan. The trigger pull on this blaster is really, really good. Way better than the Night Finder and way better than even something like a Recon or Retaliator because there is no pull to it at all. It just pops really, really nicely. And that is kind of the reason why this trigger is pushed so far back is because there is no dead space inside of this blaster at all. It's reverse plunger, which means that you can't mod it. And there is one issue with this catch that I never really realized, but I have been having a lot of problems with. This blaster has a weird pseudo slam fire that I don't think is intentional, where if you pull the priming handle back and then just let it go and let it slide forward with the return spring, it fires without me wanting it to. And it does that every single time. I've had the same problem with my Cyclone Shock, which is why I haven't reviewed the Cyclone Shock yet, because I've been trying to figure out what in the hell is wrong with that blaster and how to fix it. But it's way more of an issue with this one because the whole point is for you to just be able to do that and fire it off but it auto fires and it's not supposed to do that. You end up having to push it forward anyway, even though it has a nice return spring because otherwise it fires by itself. I don't know why it does that, but it does it a lot and it's really annoying. There's a second trigger on this blaster, you freaking goon. You're a goon. You're a goon. Yes, you are. You're a goon. That's what you are. A goon. Goon! Goon! You also can do this. Any blaster that you can flip... Oh, well, you can flip it. There you go. Any blaster that you can flip like that has bonus points added to it because that's tactical as hell. But what do I think of the Scout? It's cool. It's really good. It's actually a lot better than I originally thought it was. I am going to look into the weird auto firing issue with the spring return. I might be able to fix it, but I might not. Hopefully I can because I would like to actually use this thing as my sidearm in a Nerf War if I had to use a single shot pistol as a sidearm in a Nerf War for whatever reason. But honestly, the blaster itself is very nice. It is a pretty cool blaster and I don't really have very many complaints with it. The fact that it works on the Unity Power System as well is such a nice bonus that you can use with this thing. It's honestly a very compelling little pistol all by itself. With that said, thanks for watching. Bye.